how does the Lutheran understanding of baptism tie in to the assurance of salvation? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and this is my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt. And today, um, we're tapping into something that really should bring hope, hopefully, to people that are, are suffering with, with assurance. So let's go to baptism. Dad, what does, what does the Lutheran understanding of baptism do to, to ta- help tackle this? All right. Apart from just assuming that we're right, I used to tell my uh, students at an evangelical college before we started, first of all, read the passages on the subject. Now, back in that day, it was prior to personal computers. So a person could go to what was called Nave's Topical Bible and go to B, baptism, and then it would list them for you. Pretty exhaustive. Now you can do it with uh, a personal computer and just have it seriatim bring up passage after passage after passage after passage. That's your groundwork. Many people have never done that. Many Christians have never done that. Uh, but I knew it had to be done. These kids had a high view of Scripture already, and it was just a matter of encouraging them to read the passages on the subject. Then we began. The position is basically, our position is, that everything that Christ was and everything that he did, what are called the benefits of Christ, are given to us, even as infants, totally and simply by being baptized with water in the name of the Trinity. That's our position. It's not common. But search the passages first. Now, how would that tie into the question of assurance? Well, it would mean that even if you were just a couple of weeks old, If a pastor baptized you in the name of the Trinity, all the benefits of Christ were yours right then, all of them. You say, well, isn't there such a thing as free will? Yes, in a sort of a strange way in Lutheranism there is. It's the freedom to leave. It's a negative. Now, later on, If a person rejects Christ, rejects the Christian faith, they have to be converted. But um, the church at its best is to nurture them in that faith that was given to them even if they were only two weeks old, and is to nurture that faith and especially the preaching of the gospel, even to Christians, preach the gospel to them every Sunday, and give them the Lord's Supper, which is, we believe, another vehicle for the giving of the benefits of Christ to an individual. The pastor is going to say to you in a Lutheran church, here, take and eat the true body of Christ, given into death for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you and your sin. That's a different approach than you get from most Protestants. Most Protestants will throw you back on your faith um, and no tangible um, vehicle, not really. It's a sign. It's a sign or a seal. It's Mm -hmm. Augustine's language. Uh, we take a stronger view than that, and you can check to see whether it matches the passages. Um, It's really, really worth considering for somebody who's wrestling with the question of assurance. Even a badly catechized Lutheran will probably go to his baptism and the fact that just the Sunday preceding, the pastor put into his mouth what he called the true body of Christ, and the true blood of Christ for them, for you. So that's basically it. <clears throat> I had, uh, I've run into this sort of question before with laymen, and um, 
I just not being the scholar, uh, the rest of you are, I, I tried to memorize at least one base piece, piece of scripture uh, with the assumption that I was speaking to somebody who was aware, uh, ostensibly Christian uh, of some flavor. And uh, it was always First Peter 3.21, baptism now saves you. Mm-hmm. And I at least wanted to get into the con- part of the conversation that, verse. that stuck with the efficacy of it, that sure. it actually did something. Yep. It was efficacious. It did this thing. It yep. wasn't just a sign. It's also a sign. It's not just a sign. It actually yep. does this thing. Yep. Um, and that was seemed to be a major dividing point uh, among different denominations. Yes. And I was very pleased that with Lutheranism, it was, it actually did something and it was something you could always go back to. Yep. Um, and I know we had, uh, we had a pastor friend who did some work that, uh, I liked and it's not something w- that we have in any of our, our, um, uh, our confessions, but I like the concept of it where he described the, uh, the, uh, baptism of Jesus as washing clean the waters of baptism, mm-hmm. not so that he could receive something, but so that he could give something uh-huh. and that in the giving of the cl- of his perfection and his cleanness in the waters of baptism, yep. we then, when we ba- are baptized with him, receive the thing that he gives in the waters. And uh, I, the more I, I've good for that. Stu- the more I've studied that, and the more it, it really jives pretty well with scripture, and and it's a really cool idea, and it aligns perfectly with with the you know the communion and what we receive in the body and the blood. Right. We are given something tangible and yep. efficacious in baptism, just as we are receiving ta- something tangible and efficacious in, at, at the communion table. Yeah, absolutely. Sound about right? Yep. And uh, you'll no- if you're in another denomination, you'll notice the absence of what we just talked about for a few minutes. It's not going to be there. So this will bring more questions, and this is, al- this is always a, a consistent dividing line with Lutherans among other denominations. So um, we welcome more questions on this. Bring them up. Bring them on. We'll answer them. Hope you enjoyed this. We hope this helps. Uh, let me add one and thing before we go. We, yes. If you have the extra time to go to the helps on the Lutheran confessions and just r- find the sections... And the scriptures underneath. You're talking about the Book of Concord book here. Book of Concord. So you're going to go to look. You're going to look up. You're going to Google for Book of Concord, um, and there's one major website where it's available, and you can paw through it for free, and and search for baptism in there. Sufficient. Yep. As I as it were, sort of tongue in cheek. Anyway, hope this is uh, helpful to you, and we will catch you next time. Thank you for joining us. Please uh, visit us at 1517.org for more materials like this. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it.